There are massive spoilers ahead in regards to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains anime, so if you do not want any spoilers regarding Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, I suggest you put this in your watch later or just click off the video and come back to it when you have finished Vrains. Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains discussion video, and this time we will be going over in detail the ending of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, why I believe it is one of the most unique endings of any Yu-Gi-Oh! show, and what I truly believe happens at the end of this show, what I believe happens to Yusaku, why I believe his fate is probably the saddest fate of any character we have ever seen in a Yu-Gi-Oh! that had a good spirit or a good heart about about them, not counting characters who died like maybe a Bruno from 5Ds or anything in that regard. But before I get into that, we have to look at Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains as a whole. Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains comes to an end after only 120 episodes, by far the shortest Yu-Gi-Oh! anime in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! The shortest one before Vrains was Zexel with 146 episodes, and even that had literally six months more time than Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains did. And if we go back to the very early days of Yu-Gi-Oh!, the endings have always been synonymous with two things, maybe three things in some cases, and that's hopeful, a hopeful ending, or a happy ending. Now, the third thing, sometimes there's ambiguity, ambiguous thrown into the endings as well. We saw that to a degree with 5Ds, we saw it especially in Zexel, and Vrains has that definitive hint of ambiguous. I mean, the ending for this show is very ambiguous, but what Vrains also does is it strays away from that very happy ending that we usually see with all the shows. Going back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters, we have a Tem saying goodbye to the whole crew, and then we have, you know, Yugi and Joey and the original crew all walking with this really nice outro scene, and sure, it was definitely a bittersweet ending seeing a Tem leave, but we knew that that was for the best, that a Tem was always going to go back to his time, go back to his afterlife, that was always his goal and his purpose, and seeing young Yugi Moto develop and grow thanks to his adventures with the Pharaoh is what the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters is all about. So it was maybe a little sad, but it wasn't It wasn't like a hopeless... It, it was a hopeful tone with the original show. Then with all the spin-offs, every spin-off Yu-Gi-Oh! pretty much had a happy ending. In Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, we know Asuka, Alexis Rhodes, wants to be a teacher. That's the future she's pursuing. We know Manjome, I believe he wanted to become a dueling pro, so that's the future that he's pursuing. Now, we don't know how successful they are, in their future endeavors, but it's a very hopeful, happy, graduating tone. It's kind of how you feel when you graduate high school or college. You feel very happy. Now, sure, that post-college depression might kick in a few months after, but we don't really see that in GX because they graduate, and then the show ends, and Judai, Jaden Yuki gets his groove back by dueling Yugi Moto, and we don't know what happens in his future, so it is very open-ended, but there's a very happy tone around the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, we see everyone in the future, Aki becomes a successful doctor, interestingly enough, we do not see Yusei, so that's left a little open-ended. Again, being ambiguous, that's always been a thing with Yu-Gi-Oh! It's always been a thing with Yu-Gi-Oh! endings. They're usually left somewhat on an open-ended note, but always they have that happy feeling to them. 5D is a very happy ending. Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, the entire crew, the entire gang, after saving the world, after saving m many worlds, Baryan World, Astral World, Earth, they're going to Astral World because there's a new issue that has arisen on Astral World. But as Yuma says, the power of bonds and everyone going together, there's nothing that's going to be able to stop them from dealing with this issue. And while we never see what the issue at Astral World is, it's pretty certain that they're going to get past it. At least that's the kind of tone it's left on. It's not left on a, on a like, doomsday tone. It's left on a very happy tone. And then Arc 5, you have Shun Kurosaki smiling that his sister Ruri has passed away. And I mean, everyone, everyone handles grief differently, so I'm not really going to fault him there. But Arc 5, a very happy ending. And not really too ambiguous. I mean, the world's kind of become one. We don't really know what happens between Yuya and Yusho. But other than that, it's not really left too open-ended. Then we get Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, and for the most part, everyone in Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains has a very happy ending. Nothing too special for Aoi Zaizen, although it looks like she's built up her confidence since we first saw her in the beginning of the show. She's able to talk to Shoichi Kusanagi. Shoichi and Jin, the Kusanagi brothers, have a great ending. Jin is looks like he's being kind of a waiter, a server for Shoichi's hot dog truck. He's able to talk to customers and really has recovered so well since the trauma of the lost incident. Go Onizuka, he turns back 
back to being a pro entertainment duelist, probably a very good professional entertainment duelist. He was one of the best. And now with Yusaku, playmaker out of the picture, Go probably is close to the top of the ranks uh, with the professional dueling circuit. Akira Zaizen becomes the CEO of Soltech. Great for him. Hayami, it seems like she's promoted to the position that Akira had, or maybe she's still, or maybe she's still Akira's assistant, but clearly she's very happy. And the, the tone that is around this whole ending of Reigns is very hopeful, except for, of course, two characters, our two main characters, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. We see the Knights of Hanoi, Vyra, Gnome, Faust, the lieutenants. They're maintaining the network. So too Revolver, so too Spectre. And Soulburner, Homura has a great ending. It looks like he gets the girl in the end. He gets Kiku. He brings her into Link Vrayans. Kiku says that, Homura, you're so cool. You're amazing. And just seeing Soulburner's development throughout this whole show as being kind of a reserved, angry kid to someone who's more confident with themselves and more confident as a human being, it was an awesome ending for Soulburner. And here's where things get... They kind of take a darker turn when you really start to analyze it. The two main characters of the show have been I, the Dark Ignis, and Yusaku Fujiki, a.k.a. Playmaker. The final duel is between these two characters, as I'm sure some of us probably could have predicted. I run simulations, and in these simulations, as long as he is still alive, it means that Yusaku Fujiki will die. There's no simulation, at least from what I said, that Yusaku Fujiki does not get killed in some way, shape, or form. So I makes the decision that he would rather be the one who dies. He can see this future. He's lived this future. Yusaku means so much to him that he does not want to have to go through this future. So he gives Yusaku a choice to kill him himself or to lose to him. Yusaku dies in that moment or gets turned into data and I's clones get released to the world. Either way, the original I is going to quote unquote die after this final duel. The result does not change anything. Yusaku goes on to defeat Ai. We have a really sad emotional scene, and all the copies of Ai, it's kind of the thumbnail of the video, are collapsed around him. They're looking onto the sunset as Yusaku screams out Ai's name, and that is it. No one sees Yusaku Fujiki for three months. Now, the very last shot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, or the second last shot, I should say, is not one that I would associate with hope. It's not one I would associate with happiness. It's definitely one I would associate with ambiguous and open-endedness, and it's Yusaku, although I guess you could interpret it as hope, but it's a very desperate-looking playmaker. We hear the catch line as we see him deboarding, who knows where, but he's riding his deboard, frantically searching for what we can assume is I. Maybe he has some data that I is alive, he's on some sort of mission, who knows? But the whole theme of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrain since the very beginning of the show is that this teenager has been on a mission to kind of complete himself so that he can finally relax and put the dual disc down and based on the final ending we see a shot where he kind of does put the dual disc down that would have been honestly a better ending than the one he got in terms of his own personal fulfillment because we see a character who has had no social interaction with anyone for three months and if you do your research on it I couldn't find an exact article of how long it takes you to kind of start to go insane and, and lose yourself. But there have been so many studies done that social isolation, especially for that long of a time for 90 days is extremely unhealthy. And your mind genuinely starts to deteriorate. You start to see things and hear things that aren't actually there. I mean, it's really fascinating. And that's the ending that Yusaku Fujiki gets. He is in complete social isolation. None of his friends from this journey have heard from him or have seen him in three months. And although there is a very hopeful tone when it comes to Soul Burner's talk about him, when it comes to Revolver's talk, Shoichi's talk, I can't help but feel in the sinking gut of my stomach that this is a very desperate and desolate ending for a character that has been through so much in his 16 years of existence. I do not associate this ending with happiness like I would for Yusei in 5Ds, Judai in GX, Yuma in Zexel, Yuya in Arc 5, even little Yugi in Duel Monsters. I associate this ending with dread, more emotional pain because he just had to kill off his best friend, and ultimately, Yusaku gets no closure. If anything, the wounds have been more and more opened up because the one thing that was created from this horrific event where he was trapped in isolation for six months where all he could do was duel was I. And the one thing that was created from it has now been killed off unwillingly by his own hands. The very final shot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns 
is Eye's little icon, his eye, that's what he was named after, opens up and says, huh? As if he's surprised that he's still conscious. Now, I still, I've been sitting on this ending for about two weeks now. I still do not know what to make of this. There have been a lot of great theories that I've seen that he could be alive somewhere in the network. I mean, that would make sense. Uh, I've seen a theory that this is the afterlife, that he's not necessarily alive, and this is just him waking up in the afterlife, maybe like a cyber afterlife where he will be able to live with Lightning and Aqua and all the other Ignis that were permanently killed off. Make what you want of this ending, but it is absolutely, at least in my opinion, the most open-ended ending in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, Zexel, I would have said, had that title, and I would say Zexel's probably number two, maybe followed by 5Ds because we don't see the main character's future, although there's nothing that indicates something bad is going to happen to him. With this, we see the main character that we've been with the whole time frantically searching, desperately searching through the network in isolation for at least three months, looking for his best friend, a character that played the role of protagonist in season three and played the role of Deuteragonist, the second most important character of the show, throughout the entirety of the show being killed off but is possibly alive by means which we do not really understand. I would call that the most ambiguous, open-ended ending in the history of the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. But guys, in my opinion, Yusaku Fujiki got the saddest and the most probably depressing ending of any single character in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, not counting characters who have died because again Bruno even though there was hope linked to that death and it wasn't actually Bruno it was a simulation of him that ending for him was very bitter as well but let me know what you guys think of the ending of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains let me know if you think it's that deep where it is a very very sad ending for Yusaku's character let me know if you liked it let me know if you didn't like it I'm excited to hear all things Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains down below I will be beginning my top 10 list for Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains very soon if you're watching this on Tuesday October October 8th, Eastern Standard Time, talking Yu-Gi-Oh! Into the Vrains, the final podcast, at least where we go over the episode and the series as a whole, will be tonight at 8.30, 9pm, so I hope to see you guys there, Eastern Standard Time, of course, and yeah, let me know all your thoughts on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains ending, and the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains as a whole, since it is wrapped up now, down below. A special thank you to my Platinum Tier Patrons, Alexa Baker, Glenn McCookin, Jorge Carrillo, James Rose, Horace May, Goosey Q, Vincent Vanderveen, Jordan Osceola, Smith620, Frost Reaper, Jorge Leone, and Blue Maiden28, and do my Diamond Tier Patrons, Jesse Wood, and do my Egyptian God Tier Patrons, Joss Rivers, Melinda Phantom, and Sin Cloud. Thank you sincerely to all my Patrons, to all my channel members, and to everyone who just watches these videos, because without you guys, I would not be able to do this. Thank you all so much for watching. I will talk to you down below, and I hope you have an amazing day.